Lauren Pruger, a fourth year medical student from the University of Western Ontario. I'm interested in sports medicine. I'm also an avid cross country and distance runner, specializing in 5 and 10K. I ran two years of varsity for Queens and a year of varsity for Western, and I currently run for London Distance Runner Club in London, Ontario. I wouldn't describe myself as chronically injured, but I've definitely had my fair share of injuries. I T band syndrome, plantar fasciitis, hip pain, and it always seems to crop up right at the beginning of the season or just as I'm ramping up for a big race, negating months of training. So when Dr. Lee suggested that we do a gait analysis, I was really excited because I wanted to see if there was something about my gait that could be contributing to why I keep getting injured and whether there was anything that we could do to prevent it. What we found was a common and correctable problem called the crossover gait motor pattern. I'm going to demonstrate the gait for you, explain how it could be contributing to your IT band syndrome and other injuries, and then talk about what you can do about it. As I'm running, turn your focus to my feet, noticing how it looks like I'm running down a tightrope. Move your focus up to my knees, especially the right knee, and notice how it collapses inward during the stance phase. Finally, observe the side-to-side -side tilt of my hips. This side-to-side -side motion decreases running economy and also increases my susceptibility to injury. list of injuries commonly associated with crossover gait pattern. IT band syndrome, also known as runner's knee, is an overuse injury commonly associated with pain in the lateral knee at the lateral femoral epicondyle. Onset of pain is gradual and worsens with continued running. Or IT band runs from the anterior lateral iliac crest to Gertie's tubercle on the lateral tibia. It connects the abductors and external rotators of the hip, like TFL, glute med, and glute min, to the lower leg. It is important for stabilization of the leg during stance phase. Recent cadaveric studies have demonstrated that IT band syndrome may not be a friction syndrome, as was once thought. It is likely due to the compression of highly vascularized, nerve-dense adipose tissue overlying the femoral epicondyle. When this area is compressed by the IT band, Pacinian corpuscles send proprioceptive feedback, which activates the hip abductors, thus reducing the tension running through the IT band. In runners with a crossover motor pattern, tilting of the pelvis and internal rotation of the femur relative to the tibia increases the distance between the top of the iliac crest and lateral tibia. This increases tension in the IT band and pressure on the adipose tissue over the femoral epicondyle during the stance phase of gait. Studies by Mirden et al. support this idea with the finding that IT band strain rate is significantly increased in runners with a narrow gait. Earlier, I mentioned that this adipose tissue above the femoral epicondyle is filled with Pacinian corpuscles, which provide feedback to the abductors of the hip when they are being compressed by the IT band. The hip abductors are responsible for abducting the hip, maintaining that nice 90 degree angle between the hip and the femur. Let's see what happens when we test the abductors of someone with a crossover gait. Strong, no cheating, take your hand off the table a bit, push up strong, good, now bring your leg back. And push here. Nice and strong. <laughs> that you don't have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can get you to fire your glutes. I don't want you to run like this, but I want to see what happens when you fire your glutes and you know that they're working. So you try to mechanically look better.
see what happens when you, if you, if you have the ability to recruit those muscles. You can't run that way. But um, if you recruit the muscle, voila. Okay. So uh, you're still getting a little bit of a drop, not as bad, but you'll notice that your knee is definitely not collapsing, and there's more of a gap between your two knees, right? And if I do this, I can see a little bit more of your shoe, right? So that's all we're trying to do is we're just trying to make the smallest little bit of change that we need to to sort of offset whatever the problem is. So let's just say that your hip, um, what's going on here? I don't know what it is, but um, let's just say that it was that IT band stuff. IT band is always from having an increased angle at that hip here, and so your knee's coming in too far, your hip's dropping too, too much. So really all it's about is trying to open that up. So I could have you run with your feet wider apart, that means they do it, but how well are you gonna run if you're feeling like you're straddling or something, right? So the, the end game on this is if we can get your muscles strong enough and firing enough, so when you run, they naturally look like this, that's where you want to be, all right? So, um, pop this around your feet for me, like so, and then we'll get you standing up. Let me show you a couple things. Okay, face me, and you're going to spread your feet out as wide as you can. And any wider? Good. Alright, and then you're going to take small walking steps towards me. Nice and tiny. Tinier, wider. Keep going. Keep going right to the wall. Now turn sideways and do the same. So now you're going to go keep your feet wide and just take small little sort of side steps. And yeah. And again, it'll be working the same set of muscles, right? Right about there. Key to this one is don't let that hip cheat at all. So don't let that move anywhere from there. Even bring it forward a little more. Right there. Now go. Hold up. Three seconds. One, two, Three, slow down. It's an endurance sport. Hold up longer. So you basically want to go to fatigue on this. So three second holds and do as many until you're like, I'm done. Like if that's 20, if that's 30. So the take home message from our video today is that strong glutes and good glute activation are the key to both managing IT band syndrome and preventing it from happening in the first place. If you have a crossover gait pattern, you're at increased risk of developing IT band syndrome and you should work on strengthening those glutes to get your feet out just a little bit wider, remembering that small adjustments are the key to success. Strong glutes should not only help you remain injury free, but should make you a stronger, more efficient runner. We'll see you on the roads.